Hello, and welcome back to the Preacher Life. I thought about going outside and uh, doing this video because it's a gorgeous day out there, but considering the last time, I didn't quite dare try it. So, uh, we've been progressing now slowly through the beginning of Genesis, and last time we answered some questions, and then... Mm -hmm looked a little bit at Genesis 4 and 5 and had some questions come up so we'll look at those first and if you look at Genesis 5 as I said last week it gives the ages of the patriarchs or of the families following from Adam down to Noah and pretty well everyone lived 700, 800, and over 900 years. And yet Methuselah lives a total of 969 years. And so I got some questions on that of uh, what was a year back then and that kind of thing. Mm. Well, a year has always been the same. Mm. It's the earth going around the sun once so about 365 days um, I think I saw an article once that either the day or therefore the year is slowing down a very tiny bit that were uh, like each year I think we add like one eighth of a second or some very minimal amount like that so I guess in that way you could say that uh, years, several years ago, were uh, shorter, but even with 6,000 years, it would be a pretty negligible amount, to say the least. But some people also say that, you know, they wouldn't want to live that long. Because we look at people today that, you know, some people live up to 100 years. Mm -hmm and even older than that, but when someone gets up to this age, they generally have a lot of physical problems of maybe dementia, I can't quite remember, everything going on around them, or they have very weak muscles and bones that they can't walk very far, or they're very brittle if they fall. And imagine someone that's nine times that amount. Well, remember, as I said a while ago, that when Adam and Eve were created, that their bodies were perfect. So, due to their sin, we have problems on the earth, such as diseases and, of course, death. But just a few generations after them, the mutations or problems that would have accumulated would have been very little. So bodies would not have had the problems we see today. Also, there have been many theories that the earth at that time, before the flood, would have been a different environment that it very likely was uh, very lush and had a lot of trees around and therefore a better air quality. So these things contributed to a longer life. And also looking at the genealogies, I would guess that they aged more slowly. So that me at 40, someone may look my age, but who knows, could be 400 years old. So, again, these are possibilities. They aren't told us in scripture, so we can't be dogmatic about it, but they are very good possibilities. So today, we are going to look a little bit at Genesis 6. And I'm only going to be looking at about, oh, the first half here. 
So actually, I won't even need this. So you can hear me a little bit better. So let's start at Genesis 6 verse 1. Now it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born to them that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were beautiful and they took wives for themselves of all whom they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not strive with man forever, for he is indeed flesh. Yet his days shall be 120 years. Now, some people think that uh, this was the maximum limit given on lifespan of 120 years. And, you know, there was a time I thought that myself. But later on, we read of many people that live past 120 years. So God cannot lie. So how would we reconcile these? Well, looking further and um, studying more closely, it was actually a warning of the coming flood that in 120 years would be the uh, flood that would wipe out all the mankind. So it is not a maximum lifespan, but a warning of time to come. Now, let's jump down to verse 5. Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every intent to the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And the Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth, and he was grieved in his heart. So the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, creeping thing and birds of the air. For I'm sorry that I made them, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. So again, some people may read these and think, well, God made a mistake and he uh, wanted to wipe out his mistake. No, that's not the case here. We see that uh, Mankind, as we just read, was evil and did not uh, do what God had said. And we see that from the beginning of Adam and Eve. And some people will say that God is love and that he would not kill anyone. But God is a righteous judge and just as a human judge would uh, not be considered loving or righteous if you let criminals go, well, that's the case with God as well. That as people have sinned, then we deserve to have punishment that uh, comes along with it. And that is what's happening here. That everyone had sinned and just as today everyone receives the penalty or the wages of sin which is death and this is what happens here in the flood but one person and his family Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord and then starting at verse 9 it gives the genealogy of Noah said, this is the genealogy of Noah, that he was a just man, perfect in his generation, and Noah walked with God. And Noah begot three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. The earth was, excuse me, the earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. So God looked upon the earth, and indeed it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted their way on the earth. So we look around us today, and we see a lot of corruption as well. That 
countries like the U.S. especially and many others around the world have completely abandoned God's word and go against him. And I can only imagine what it was like in Noah's day of everyone that uh, went against God and so much that uh, he said all intentions or every uh, intention of their hearts were wicked all the time. And we see the same in the New Testament where uh, Paul records that the heart of everyone is deceitfully wicked. And unfortunately, we have not learned much since this time. But after this, God called Noah and then gave him the dimensions of the ark and the purpose for it. But that is where we're going to end today because the ark and its details are very interesting. And I have my little sidekick ark here. And we'll look at that some more as we get future videos. But for now, we're going to end it today. And as always, I recommend reading on your own. And for the next few weeks, we'll look at the ark and the flood. But for now, thank you for watching The Preacher Life. And I'll get you next week. Bye for now.